Hello friends and welcome to the Architecture Enthusiast and to the Goethe Annum, completed in 1928 by Rudolf Steiner. Spiritually expressive, liberal, and primordially emotive, the Goethe Annum is the architectural embodiment of its creator's anthroposophical philosophy. A human-oriented spiritual movement that reflects on the deep questions of humanity and our basic artistic needs. The brainchild of Austrian philosopher, social reformer, architect, economist, and esotericist Rudolf Steiner, both the Gotha Annum and Anthroposophy are firmly rooted in the foundation of German writer Johann Wolfgang von Goethe's theory of natural life cycles and studies in biology, a principle that inspired the Goethe Annum's namesake. Situated in the mountainous region of Dornach, Switzerland, Steiner's first Goethe Annum was completed in 1919 and comprised primarily of sculpted wood, but only a few years later, remarkably, it burned down. The second Gotha Annam, publicly accessible to this day, was conceived by the architect as an illustration of a new style of architecture, at once organic and functional. It was realized in 1928, just after Steiner's death. The first Gotha Annam was a dramatic exercise in expression, with unusual forms carved from wood by boat builders, colored glass windows, and double-domed rooftop. Pioneering new techniques and styles, Steiner sought to express the union of spirit and matter through architecture. After the building was destroyed by arson, it was widely considered a huge architectural loss. The Gotha Annum, as a finished structure in all its beauty, was able to speak its message to humanity only for a few short years, writes Marie Steiner, wife and colleague of Rudolf in a foreword of Ways to a New Style in Architecture, a published series of five lectures by Rudolf given at Darnock, Switzerland, during the building of the first Gotha Annum. The full wonder of it was revealed to but a small group of people, although day in and day out crowds of eager sightseers wound up the hill, there to open their hearts to the breath of the spirit in curiosity wonder, admiration, emotion, and richer by yet another longing, once again to wend their way back to the world of banality. Steiner designed the second Gotha Annum, a building to replace the original, wholly cast of concrete. It represents a pioneering use of visible concrete in architecture, particularly in its achievement of sculptural shapes on an architectural scale. A large glazed opening connects the interior with the rocky terrain that forms its backdrop. Once inside, the experience of navigating the interior spaces can be described as moving within a giant sculpture. Organically expressive forms and innovation for the time embodied Steiner's expressionist movement, revolutionary ideas, and enthusiasm for anthroposophy. No less important is the color of the space which mirrors the shades of the sun and the earth, functioning as a visual introduction to the metaphysical ideas of Steiner's anthroposophy. Filtered through engraved colored glass windows, light bounces off watercolor murals in a sequence of green, blue, violet, and pink. That dreadful calamity was just the occasion to bring to light what fantastic notions there are in the world linked with all that this Gotha Annam in Dornacht intended to do and all that was done in it. Steiner said in a lecture soon after the fire. Giving birth to a generation of architectural ideas to come, the Gotha Annam drew the visit and praise of creative legends including Henry van de Velde, Frank Lloyd Wright, Hans Scharoun, and Frank Gehry. Today, the Gotha Annam is the headquarters for the School of Spiritual Science and the General Anthroposophical Society. 
The School of Spiritual Science remains active worldwide in the research, development, teaching, and practical implementation of its findings. Public events and workshops are hosted inside its 1,000-seat auditorium and range from lectures to international conferences and performances that give expression through anthroposophy. The transformation between the wooden construction of the first Gata'anam and the concrete structure of the second one represents a significant shift. The suppleness of the wood, its fibrous, grown character, lent itself well to the idea of an organic architecture. While working in wood, observes Steiner, one creates space by subtracting a cavity. Concrete, on the other hand, is a material which generates convex forms by adding to the surface. This was a new interpretation of the identity of concrete, generally used at the time to build tectonic frames comparable to timber construction. Steiner, however, rejected this model even when he had to replace a wooden construction. What Steiner called the spirit manifests itself in metabolic processes. The heavy concrete body of the Gotaanum, itself an imprint, works as a kind of mold, enveloping the memory of its burnt down predecessor, absorbing the observer's attention and in turn forming the observer's sense. Steiner spoke of Umstulpung, eversion, turning inside out a form-defining process which he identified as a cosmic principle, making a cavity out of mass, putting spirit and matter in a dialectical relationship. The animate forms of contemporary computer-generated architecture might appear as a further move on a metabolic chain, but in reality, the new superficiality of computer-generated forms lacks the most important dimension of Steiner's work, the drama of the struggle with gravity, with the resulting architectural object constituting an objection against the ongoing process of immaterialization.